try to make the most of it and enjoy. yeah that's going crazy so I have a 3090 Ti uh, it's taking a little bit uh, well it's taking everything it can which I would expect for this type of game but still let's just see what's happening okay I'm going to the settings uh, since I have a Belgian keyboard, uh, I have Azerty, so I don't this one, I can change the things. Uh, I would say it's a little bit more. you cannot change it yet I'll just keep it this way
Space program leaping forward into the cosmos. Since the dawn of Kerbal Kine, we have looked to the sky and wondered what sublime mysteries lie hidden in the darkness, like jewels never beheld. These untold treasures may soon reveal themselves due to the efforts of recently founded Kerbal Space. Oh my! <laughs> Might have been the only copy of the orientation film. Hold on! <laughs> Slides! Uh, somewhere! <clears throat> Welcome to your first day running the Kerbal Space Program. This campus hosts the greatest ever gathering of astronomers, astronauts, and engineers. After years of focused effort, this collection of geniuses has created several very impressive buildings. We believe we have all the necessary pieces to take our first steps off the ground. The best way to advance our technologies further is to get up there and learn by doing. All we need now is somebody to show us how to put all these parts together. Well, we also need somebody to help us out with the flying. We need a lot of help, actually. That's why you're here. My name is Paige, by the way. If you need any hints, feel free to visit me over at the training center. Everything in there is well padded, so it's a great place to get up and running. Welcome aboard! Welcome aboard. Oh my god, it's very different. Now, before, if you played in uh, on the 4K screen, you were not able to read anything. Now, it's actually pretty cool. So you can actually read everything you need. Apparently, yes. No, I don't. Oh. Yeah, you can zoom out very well. But I do like the layout, to be honest. Before it was just meh. Just uh, a few things, but now... Yeah, it's, it's very, 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 very good. I need to go to the train station. The uh, train center? Oh, go to train center. Just do the trainings. Well, I'm not Scott Manley, but I do have a little bit of knowledge about it. Then he taught me how to walk, so thank Space you. is the place. So you want to get to space. Have you tried rockets? 
Rockets use fuel and engines to create thrust, which propels them forward. When a fuel tank is empty, it is dropped to stay as lightweight as possible, allowing the rocket to go even faster. These tanks, as well as other expendable parts of a rocket, are called stages. Different stages do different things. Often the first stage is very powerful, with just enough fuel to get the vehicle through the atmosphere. The second stage usually has a low thrust engine that, while not as powerful, is more fuel efficient. After dropping the heavier first stage and leaving the atmosphere, the second stage engine pushes the much lighter second stage to orbital speed. On a flight to space, the final stage parachutes back down to the surface, ideally in one piece. Let's go to the space program. Basically everything is this, this, this logic. Welcome to the launch pad. As you embark on your journey into rocketry, it's important to get all the crashing out of your system here in the simulator. It really cuts down on the awkward phone calls. Today you'll be launching into the virtual skies over KSC, where you'll learn how to control a rocket. Let's learn how to rotate the flight camera. That way, you can see the launch great. You can also zoom the camera in and out. Nice! Go ahead and pick your... Your rocket is ready for launch. Every good launch starts with a big green button and lots of fire. Most bad launches do too, actually. Looking good! Ascend to 1,000 meters, and then we'll learn some controls. Okay, you're a kilometer up. You can still crash, but you'll have more time to correct your course if you start pointing at the ground. Let's learn some rocket controls. When flying a rocket or a plane, we have specific terms for moving. Pitch tilts your rocket's nose up. Nice pitch. Now pitch up until you're flying straight up. your rocket left and right. Try it now. Now yaw to the left. Excellent. Now for the final control. Roll rotates your rocket clockwise and counterclock. That's the basics of rocket flight. Feel free to experiment with the control. It's still the same as before. Except you have a tutorial that actually explains everything. For now it's nothing new, but I have to say the interface a lot better. So you want to get to space. It's time to make a rocket. Yeah, that's very different as before. So... A simple rocket requires four crucial components. A command module, fuel tank, engine, and parachute. Let's start by learning how to add a command module. A command module allows us to control our vessel. As long as there is at least one... Com For this lesson, we're going to make a small rocket. So we need a... Great! It doesn't look like much, but it's a promising start. The next thing our rock... How about that one? Notice the part is once again... Now that's beginning to look like a rocket. Well, to break free of Kerbin's soupy atmosphere, we... Now let's add the sustainer engine to the fuel tank. Excellent! Our rocket is looking pretty great. We just need one final touch. As it... Our one Kerbal rock. Now all we need to do. Congratulations! You've just built a rocket. Are you sure you haven't done this before? Okay. 
Okay, the... Um, yeah, it helps you how to build a rocket, but it didn't talk about stages. And as you well know, you have to check your staging. But still, it's just a bit... As you start to build rockets, you'll want to see your designs from other angles. Let's learn how to manipulate the camera inside the vehicle assembly building. First, let's... Nice! Now, let's zoom the camera great. Now, let's pan the camera. You can also focus your camera at a specific part. If you want to view your That's rocket from nice. the top, front, or sides, switch to blueprint mode. You can change... If you ever get lost in the VAB, oh, you can nice. always reset the camera. Okay, no, I like it. I had sometimes uh, in the early... Well, I think everybody had this issue. Uh, in the old Kerbal Space Program, it was difficult to do so. Focus on... Nice! Now you can get at those hard-to-reach parts of your rocket. Your rocket's ready. Better. Let's take it out for a little hop. Let's move this rocket to a launch pad. Welcome to the launch pad. Today you'll be flying straight up. Your rocket should do fine without any steering inputs. But if things get out of line somehow, feel free to intervene. the launch tower and your flight is underway. Let's on your right, you'll find the staging stack. It displays each stage's fuel supply is shown on a bar next to the stage. Your active stage, stage one, your first stage is out of fuel and all it is doing is slowing you down. To drop that weight, you're going to activate your next stage. That will activate, ready? Hit go to lose that mess. Congratulations! You're nearly to space! And activate the next stage to separate those tanks. Your capsule will now continue coasting up. All that's left to do is gaze back down at Kerbin and wonder if you remembered to lock your car. Nice work! Did I leave the stove on? The game is taking 15 gigabytes. Your of capsule has a lot of momentum. Memory. If you're curious how high up you are, and it's take a look at your altimeter. You're so high that you can see the curve of the horizon. This game is not for every computer. For Rocketry now, involves a lot of waiting between the cool explosions. You can speed up time by selecting the time warp controls at the bottom of your screen. You're all tip. You're about to start falling back down. Let's slow down and enjoy the view. Great job. You're now a master of time. Try not to use this new power for evil. Of course we won't. What goes up must come down. Wind resistance will slow down your capsule's descent. If you deploy your parachute too early, it'll be torn off. If you deploy it too late, you'll do some unplanned underground exploration. The sweet spot for Kerbin is between 20,000 and 2,000 meters. It depends on your speed. It depends on the parachute itself. But that was in KSP-1. I'm not sure if they 
for now anyway have a difference between those parachutes the speed and everything we will see okay you're low enough to activate the final stage that contains your parachute hit go to pop okay, your shoot nice, nice work the parachute yeah, will trail awesome. your capsule for a bit without fully opening once you've slowed down enough it'll open all the way by itself Parachute is now fully deployed and slowing the capsule to a safe velocity. Congratulations! If this were real, you'd find celebratory snacks in the VAB kitchen. Okay, done. It could be. Well, it's the first time you do it, I think. For everybody that is used to play K playing KSP, it will be boring. But I do understand why they do it. <laughs> I know a few people that say, oh, it was awful, I, didn't even, I wasn't able to get into orbits and they got bored or out of it or discouraged. So I understand why they do it, because it's not... Missing it's not the ground. Game. It's not an easy game as well. Because if you want to visit space for more than a couple of minutes, you'll need to get to orbit. An object is in orbit when it's moving sideways so quickly that even as gravity causes it to fall, it keeps missing the ground. As long as that object isn't slowed down by anything, it follows the same path every time it goes around the body it's orbiting. Forever. If that object is a Kerbal, it is recommended that they bring lots of snacks. So since your goal is to move horizontally at a high speed, why not launch sideways? On Kerbin, the atmosphere is like a thick soup. You waste a lot of fuel trying to fly through it horizontally. By launching vertically, you cut through the thickest part of the atmosphere as quick as possible. Most orbital rockets begin tilting toward the horizon soon after they leave the launch pad. This maneuver, called a gravity turn, uses the planet's gravity to turn the ship and reduces the amount of fuel needed to achieve a stable orbit. When launching near the equator, your gravity turns should point toward the east since your vehicle gets a free boost from the planet's rotation. Thanks, planet. Once a vehicle is moving quickly enough that its arc will take it above the atmosphere, it shuts down its engines and coasts to space. Once it nears the top of that arc, the vehicle needs to fire its engines a second time to keep itself from falling back down to the planet. Doing this turns that arc into a nice big circle. Congratulations! You've missed the ground! a rocket, it's often easiest to work top to bottom, tailoring each stage to carry the weight of everything above it. To give you a head start, I Anytime we intend to drop an empty stage after using all of its fuel, we connect it to the stage above it using a decoupler. Add that decoupler to... We need to attach a larger, more powerful lower stage to the bottom of your rocket. To keep things simple, I've whipped up a new lower stage in another workspace. You can bring saved vehicles and other sub-assemblies into an in-progress workspace by merging it. Let's merge my lower stage into this VAB workspace. 
Okay, that's actually very nice. Out in the real world, this list would show all of your saved workspaces. Now that the lower stage has been merged into your perfect, merging is a very powerful tool. Anytime you want to reuse a particular booster, lander, Space rockets sometimes need an extra boost. In a rare case of rocket scientists naming something well, these additional rocket engines are called boosters. Boost will start by attaching four radial decouplers that will eject the spent boosters when they're empty. To make sure that these decouplers are evenly spaced and aligned with one another, you'll be using the symmetry tool. Great! Now when you place a part on one side of your rocket, three more evenly spaced duplicates will appear. Good! Now attach it as shown. Perfect! Now you've got four radial decouplers exactly where they need to be. Let's attach those solid fuel boosters. Since you're still in 4x symmetry mode, simply attach this booster to one of great job. You've finished your orbital rocket. You can see if that's all you need to get into orbit perfectly, it's uh, it seems less than that's maybe because it just looks like Before you launch a rocket, the staging order begins at the bottom of the staging stack. You want your boosters and main engine to fire together for maximum thrust. The solid fuel boosters are currently in the second stage. If we don't change anything, the boosters will ignite late and detach themselves at the same time. This would be embarrassing for everybody, so let's move the boosters down to stage one. Sorry, I was uh, AFK for a bit. Because, yeah, you have to. So that's be like before. Just the same thing. Your solid fuel boosters burn very hard and very fast, so they will run out of fuel first. Even though your main engine and boosters will activate at the same time, you want to drop the empty boosters before you drop your main engine. You'll add a new stage above stage one to do one thing. Activate the radial decouplers to jettison your spent boosters. Now move all four radial decouplers. All done. Your remaining stages are set up so that stage four will activate your orbital stage's engine. Stage five will detach the orbital stage's fuel tank when it's empty. And stage six will deploy your landing parachute. Thanks to you, this rocket is ready to fly. But we didn't put something aerodynamically on top of those boosters. But still, just boosters, so... Not the first time we did it in case people as well. 
more boosters. All right, we're ready to light this candle. In this flight, you're going all the way to orbit. I'll walk you through the process of launching, executing a gravity turn to get moving sideways, coasting to orbital altitude, and doing a final burn at the top of your arc to establish a stable orbit. Before we begin, let's talk about the nav ball. The nav ball shows your vehicle's orientation relative to the horizon. The blue half of the ball represents the sky, and the brown half represents the ground. The level indicator at the center shows your vehicle's orientation. When you turn, the ball turns. When you roll, the ball rolls. Assuming you want your rocket pointed at the sky, you'll want to see lots of blue on the nav ball. If you get confused, remember this rhyme. If the nav ball's brown, you're going down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sandy, I'm used to play with uh, Principia. Principia. I don't know how do you pronounce it, but anyway. At launch, you want all your engines at maximum thrust, which means you need to set your throttle at 100%. Your solid fuel boosters are way ahead of you on this. They have no setting other than full throttle, and they can't be shut off once they're lit. Once you hit the go button, they'll go full tilt until they run out of fuel. Still, your main engine's throttle is in your control. It's the same as before. You can see your main throttle here. Left oh. shift gradually increases your throttle. Your fuel levels are visible within the staging stack. Right now, you can see that your main engine and four boosters are all topped off and ready to rumble. It's time to go. At the start, all you need to do is fly straight up. I'll check back in with you once those boosters are empty. Good luck. Start your gravity turn. A gravity turn uses... First, we need to get to 10,000 meters. You're going to yaw towards the east so that the target marker is in the center of the nav ball. Your vessel and nav ball should look like this example video if you're performing the gravity turn correctly. Gravity, your current stage's fuel is empty. Let's drop it and activate your deep space engine. Great job! Your rocket is on its way to orbit. As you gain experience, you can make your gravity turns more efficient by starting to tilt your rocket soon after liftoff. Adjusting course with a series of small corrections instead of one big one will leave you with a lot more fuel when you get to orbit. Turning immediately after launch requires a very stable rocket. So if you ever have trouble keeping the pointy end up, you can try the simplified wait and turn method we use today. Yeah. Very easy. Still. Right now, we're on a ballistic trajectory. If no further adjustments are made, your rocket will eventually fall back down to the ground. Our objective is to turn this arc into an orbit. The process of turning your trajectory into a circular orbit is called circularization. Partial credit to the rocket people on that one. It does have the word circle in it. When planning and executing orbital maneuvers, you'll want to switch to map view, where you can see every part of your current trajectory. The blue arc passing through your vehicle is its current trajectory, the path your rocket will follow if you don't touch the controls anymore. Our goal is to make that arc into a circular orbit. After you've coasted nearly to the top of this arc, you're going to point forward, and then you're going to ignite your... Let's break that down a little more. The top of your arc has a helpful tag in map view. It's called the... We're paused at just before the apoapsis. We want to go... F you're all lined up and ready to go. The next step is to go max throttle. It can take time for your arc to fully expand into an orbit. Once your trajectory reaches all the way around the planet, you'll see another marker on your orbit. 
This is the periapsis, or PE, the lowest point in your orbit. It'll always live on the opposite side of your orbit from the apoapsis, or highest point. By burning prograde near your... Here's the most important thing to remember about setting up an... Keep your eye on your trajectory for now, and I'll tell you if your periapsis is safely out of the atmosphere. I don't see the numbers. <clears throat> Oh, there he is. Okay. Not the information. It's not the most efficient way to make a... Yeah. Okay, your orbit is fully out of the atmosphere. Cut the mm -hmm. throttle. You did it! You're in orbit! Thank this you. is when I'd usually tell you to look under your seat in the simulator, where you'd find a delicious celebratory treat. Sadly, since the vending machine in the Astrodynamics lab broke down, it has gotten very difficult to hide snacks anywhere at KSC. Feel free to take... Okay, that's easy. Still the same as before. I think now it's going to be interesting because I think we are going to talk about the movement. Orbits are weird. <laughs> Remember your orbiting baseball? What if you wanted to make its orbit higher? Well, it's a baseball, so grab your bat and try to hit the ball to a higher orbit. Your first thought might be to try to deflect the ball upwards. Unfortunately, hitting the ball upward bends its orbit so that it hits the ground before it can return to you. What you need to do is hit the ball in the direction it's already moving, adding to its already high velocity. Now that you've sped the ball up, why isn't it flying any higher? It just keeps whizzing by at the same height it always did. After all, I said that making it go faster would make it go higher. What gives? The ball is actually going higher but it's going higher on the opposite side of the planet from where you're standing. You've raised its orbit, and you've learned the first lesson of orbital maneuvering. Your actions affect the opposite side of your orbit. Weird, huh? So your ball is moving faster, but it's still passing you at the same height. How do you get its orbit higher on this side of the planet? Now that you know how changes in velocity affect the other side of your orbit, you've got all you need. By adding velocity to the ball at the highest point in its orbit, you raise the lowest point in its orbit and make it circular again. Orbit is good, but if you want to travel beyond Kerbin, you will need to manipulate your orbit. Let's start with something simple, expanding an orbit. We do that by increasing the value of our apoapsis. Let's get a good view. Remember how you circularized your orbit by increasing your forward velocity? To raise your orbit, you'll just do more of the same. It's time to burn prograde. Now that we're pointed the right way, we can increase the throttle and watch our orbit expand. We'll cut the... Nice! That maneuver raised our orbit on the other side of Kerbin, so we will enter high orbit there. Waiting to reach a specific point can be as eventful as watching the neon stripes on your rover dry. The paint job will be worth it, but isn't it better to rush to the end? Skip ahead to the good stuff using a time warp. Like I said earlier, the highest... Scroll the middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Excellent! You can time warp to any position on your trajectory. Now you're way up in the sky, so high that if you circularize your orbit now, you'll be in high orbit. Wow, the black starry void looks so small from here. Yeah, that's still basic knowledge. 
but the maneuver system is a lot better than what we thought. Oh yeah, you don't need a lot now to actually see what you're doing. From command pods to space probe cores, a lot of critical rocket parts use electric charge. You'll want to design your rocket so it can generate and store EC. Most rocket engines generate a... Solar panels convert Kerbal's light into EC for... <laughs> Just kidding. There's a handy button that opens all of them with a single click. Give it a try. Great! Oh, the solar nice. panels are now extended. Light tracking solar panels only rotate on one axis, so we may need to reorient our ship to point them fully at the sun. Let's make sure the panels are getting direct sunlight by rolling our ship a little bit. Excellent. The solar panels are soaking up all of those sweet... Getting EC is one thing, and storing it is another. Most command pods have a small battery, but many missions will call for additional EC storage. When we're traveling far from the sun or going to the dark side of a planet, more batteries means more peace of mind. Yeah, that was the, the same before, but now I have the, the, the feeling that you need to orient your ship to the sun to have. Actually, the models are nice. Yeah, it's very nicely done. Oh, cool. That, that's nice. But, yeah. A lot of headphones. <laughs> oh, those girls. That's a battery. Oh, what is it? Okay. At some point, the crew will run out of snacks. Did you know a Kerbal is 99.9% .9 more likely to crash when hungry? That's when it's time to head back down to Kerbin, a planet known for its plentiful snack options. First, let's get a better view for this operation. Remember how we burned Prograde to raise our orbit? To lower, now flip retro. All right, the rocket is aligned to retro. As we decelerate, watch what's happening to our periapsis. Once it enters the atmosphere, this rocket is on a path back to the ground. Don't ease off the throttle yet, though. We're going to keep burning until our trajectory intercepts the ground. This should give us a good idea. That's it. Let's stop our burn. Now that we're on a collision course with Kerbin, we need to turn that collision into something more survivable. This process of crashing without dying is called landing. Our upcoming stage will activate a decoupler, dropping the engine and exposing a very important heat shield. Why don't you do that now? Great! We're on our way down and our heat shield is exposed. Have you ever wondered what a marshmallow feels like when it catches on fire? You're about to find out! Okay. Yeah. Still nothing you learn, but I do like the way they explain this stuff. I just hope you don't you need to do all those tutorials and the time. Start, but it's an early access, so I'm expecting a lot of changes. Orbital transfer that's actually the most important thing ever. Orbital transfers, as you know, the faster you go, the higher your orbit gets. If you get moving fast enough, your orbit may cross the orbit of some other object, like a moon or a planet. The closest celestial body to Kerbin is the Mun. If you're looking for somewhere else to fly a rocket, the Mun is a good choice. The real trick to getting there is timing your departure so that the Mun captures your vehicle at its highest point. If you mistime your departure, you may miss the Mun entirely, which creates a lot of paperwork. Let's assume you've left at the right time and the MUN is there to meet you. As your vessel approaches the MUN, it enters a zone in which the MUN's gravitational influence on your orbit is stronger than Kerbin's. This zone is called the MUN's sphere of influence. 
You've had to go very quickly to escape Kerbin's gravity. Much too fast for the Mun's low gravity to capture you. If you don't slow down, your vehicle will speed past the Mun and be flung farther into space. Remember what I said about paperwork? Yeah. Once you're in the Mun's gravity well, the best way to slow down is to fire your engines backwards until your trajectory becomes a nice, stable orbit. Now you're a moon of the Mun! Our rocket is in orbit over Kerbin and ready to fly. The mission today is to, drum roll please, intercept and orbit the Mun. To be captured by, we're going to create a maneuver plan to figure out what, great. Now here's a new trick. We can select any object as a target in map view. Targeting gives us useful information and enables new tools. Once we've targeted a celestial body, right now our camera is following our vessel as it orbits Kerbin. Let's adjust our camera until we can see the MUN. Then right click to target it. We want to place this maneuver plan with two things in mind. Second, remember how increasing velocity raises the opposite side of our orbit? Since we're placing this maneuver plan where we intend to start our burn, we should place it on the opposite side of Kerbin from where we intend to intercept the MUN. Placing a maneuver plan usually involves making a best guess and then fiddling with the maneuver until you get an in excellent. We've just created a maneuver plan. While we could find out if our departure timing is correct by just picking a direction and maxing the throttle, a maneuver plan tells us in advance how much delta V we'll need how long we'll need to burn, and in what direction our vessel will need to point during the maneuver. Grab and pull the arrows to plan a burn along that direction. This maneuver is pretty simple. We want to burn prograde and expand our orbit. Nice! That maneuver event towards the end of your trajectory is exactly what we're looking for. It tells that if we execute this plan, we'll intercept the MUN. It also tells us that we will accelerate when we encounter the MUN and have an high orbit. So, it's not a free trajectory. But still. If a maneuver nice. looks right, but we're not getting the intercept we expect, we can change the starting position of the maneuver by grabbing and dragging the middle of the maneuver plan along our orbit. It's very common to refine a maneuver plan by adjusting both the position of the maneuver and the direction of the planned burn. Basically the same. Okay. If we don't want to maneuver at all, we can delete the plan, either by right-clicking the gizmo and selecting delete, or through the burn timer. Maneuvers are invaluable when leaving Kerbin. Feel free to come back and practice anytime. Okay. I would have thought that the uh, buttons were a little bit more prominent at the bigger, but still, it's better than it We've got a maneuver plan that intercepts the MUN. Now we just need to execute that maneuver and fly to the MUN ourselves. Whenever we have a maneuver plan, a burn timer will appear. The timer shows you how much time is left until we need to execute the maneuver. I've paused the simulation for a moment, so that the timer also tells us how long we'll need to burn our engines at 100% throttle in order to complete the maneuver. Now let's take a look at the nav ball. A new marker. Now your vehicle is properly oriented. 
And through the magic of SAS and more math than I'd like to admit, our vessel is properly oriented. We're still far from our planned burn, so let's speed things up. While we could rely on our reflexes to time warp at the perfect departure burn, here we come. Great! We've exited just before our maneuver burn, and I've paused the simulation once more. Uh, okay, get ready to hit the throttle. Watch the burn timer. We want to stop our burn once it reaches zero. Oh, that's nice. Look. successfully executed a maneuver, and now we're on our way to the Mun. Next. Okay. That's it. <clears throat> yeah, this is fun. It's going to take a while to reach the Mun, but don't let the weight fool you. We're now moving faster than any Kerbal has ever flown before. When we enter the Mun's sphere of influence, we'll be going way too fast for the Mun's gravity to capture our vehicle. Yeah. To orbit the Mun, we'll need to burn retrograde once we're inside its SOI, or sphere of influence. This let's start by time warping until we're within the Mun's sphere of influence. Farewell, Kerbin. We'll miss you. It's going to stop by itself or not, because, yeah, I don't know. I do like that you have the entry and the exit, uh, yeah. Welcome to the Mun's Sphere of Influence. Let's look. Did you notice that we've got a periapsis above the Mun, but no apoapsis? Yeah. That's because we're going too fast to complete an orbit before sailing past the Mun. <coughs> don't worry, we have time to adjust. Our objective is to slow down enough so that both apoapsis and periapsis are within... Remember the rule of orbital opposites. Because we want to lower your apoapsis... In order to reduce our apoapsis, we need to slow down by burning backwards, or retrograde. This is a little like deorbiting over Kerbin, but we're going to stop burning before our trajectory... Maneuver plan set. Next up, let's make sure we're pointed where we need to be. If the maneuver is right, and we're pointed in the right direction, and we're on our way. Yeah, that maneuver node system is a little bit better than before. Almost sure there. When the countdown reaches zero, so. throttle up to start your capture burn. Oh yeah, need to do that too. Well, I can do it now, but... Keep burning until the burn timer reaches zero. Shut the engines now. We have an orbit. Fantastic. That was some fancy flying. Looks to me like you're about ready to try this for real. Yeah. So... I've done the tutorial, apparently. My system is a bit hotter than usual. 
It's called fly safe. Yeah. Where did they get them from? The test I'm we're going to do now is going and try to re-enter the atmosphere without burning up. So having a few decelerations uh, with the atmosphere. For I'm going to test if the things are very, very well made. So I will also use boosters because I want to have a very high Uh, maybe 
maybe they are a little bit too big. Yeah, that's better. For now, I don't give a shit about those. Uh, Okay. I will see if the stabilizers just leave them like that. I'm not going to touch them for now. Okay, actually you have a lot of possibilities now. Okay, uh, I'm going to call this the high velocity VN3 and I'm going to save it because why not?
Okay, that's very strange because my parachute didn't work. Why didn't it work? Okay, so basically if you're in time warp you cannot use anything. Fair enough.
that's about it for time that I have for today. Um, my final thoughts. Is it worth the 50 euros or 50 bucks you have to pay for it? If you are really a fan of the game, absolutely. I mean, it's not finished, finished. Uh, it's presentable. Uh, I'm sure they will be adding a lot of things be be in coming weeks and days and months and maybe years, but hopefully for many years. But the experience you have or you had before with KSP1, um, it is a new experience. Um, I will be testing a few things as well later on, not today, uh, probably. Uh, next week I will be making a bit of time for it. But yeah, there are actually a lot of things you will have to to learn. Uh, the learning curve, if you are used to play KSP1, there is no. I mean, I didn't know you would actually crush it because you wouldn't be able to use the staging if you're in the atmosphere like you did in KSP1 uh, while in Time Warp. But you can burn and have Time Warp now, which is, <laughs> let's be honest, amazing. You also have a lot of um, better UI elements. I mean, look at the nav ball. The nav ball is clearer. You have the, the up speed, down speed. Um, the atmospheric uh, placements, the, the buttons for SAS and RCS are very visible, uh, the control for the SAS bar, the appropriate and the normal um, parts, I mean, it's clear, up, down, before you had uh, normal, anti-normal, I mean, it's, it's a lot better in this uh, regard. You also have the mouse to actually be playing at the um, I do miss a few things but I'm still learning a little bit of the game but I have to say yeah it is it is nice uh, I do like it I do enjoy uh, learning about it now but I will be coming back later and I will have a lot of more uh, tests done and have more knowledge to explain what's happening I wish you all well and hopefully we will be seeing each other very soon have a nice day, goodbye